I'm going to call this meeting to order, and our first order of business is to review and approve the minutes of our April 6th meeting. So moved. Yeah. April 6th. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. <laughs> uh, next on our list, um, uh, the warrants. 22, 22P, and from the Recreation Board, we have number seven. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, moving right along, the Historical Society's Building Committee uh, mm -hmm. proposed addition to the building and a request for the Select Board uh, Select Board's approval. Would um, one of you or all of you bring your chairs up to the table? We can we'll sit behind you. I'll come forward if I may. If it's all right with you, let me quickly run down the notes here. I won't read them word for word. I'm sure I have We we'll all have it back at right? Yeah, we have a couple extras if there's anyone here. Anybody need a. Oh, yeah. So uh, you can see in addition, in addition to the notes, there are there are these perspectives on the proposed edition that came from David Lyon. And uh, he also sent a footprint, but I on my computer for some reason I couldn't print it out, so I I made a roughly to scale sketch showing what he had sent. Uh, so it's a little easier to read than his also. So anyway, you'll recall that this is a joint effort of the Historical Society and the town. Um, and the swap is that the Historical Society would be able to use the restroom here and the town could use the meeting space, larger meeting space in the schoolhouse. And after the addition and a few changes, the meeting space will be even a little bigger than it is right now. Um, so uh, we'll come to this in a minute. But this shows the various perspectives. And missing from the drawing, although it does show on the footprint, is a possible uh, shed roof addition <laughs> on the back. And we can look at that more closely in a minute. Um, inside. One possibility is to have a mezzanine or a balcony that would extend uh, part way across the new addition. So there would be some access to the second floor, which you might think of as the attic. That's uncertain whether that will be done, but it is a possibility. Um, and that would give us more storage space, of course. The, uh, the south wall of the existing addition this, this, this addition, by the way, the new one, is right on the south end of the existing L addition of the building. And the interior, what's now the end wall of the current addition, will be kept, but there will, of course, be a doorway through into the new one. And uh, the windows there will, will come out, uh, being, being covered over. Um, about 400 additional square feet would be added, depending on this mezzanine balcony knee walls, uh, how much space that leaves. Um, and very important to us is the, towards the bottom of the page in the notes, that many details as to windows, finishes, furniture, etc., will have to be decided as we go along. And um, 
uh, uh, some other things too. The size might have to be tweaked. This will depend partly on budget and maybe on uh, design and refinements. So we're hoping, as I say in the motion on the next page, that we will be given the uh, authority to make those adjustments as we go without having to come back to the board. And this was uh, essentially the motion passed by the Historical Society the other night, also giving us that uh, kind of freedom of action that we think we need. We know we'll need the following permits, local zoning, uh, the State Division of Public Safety, the State Water and Septic. And uh, since the town owns the land, it, perhaps the town is the applicant, and perhaps we are. I think there's some uncertainty as to that, whether it's the owner of the building or the owner of the land, but probably the owner of the land. Charlotte thinks it's the owner of the building. Uh -oh. Yeah, she did, yeah. Well, and, and maybe our rent has to go up. You know, oh, we no, pay no, a no. dollar a year, oh, maybe we have to pay a dollar and ten cents. We <laughs> would be glad to double the rent. We? <laughs> we double it. It's the land. <laughs> um, so we so, have that on record. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Except but I think the agreement between the town and the historical society says it's a 99-year lease or whatever at. I'm well, sure. well, I didn't mean to double it. No, I meant at the well, expiration of oh, the next lease term. So the important thing here, the really important thing, is the motion, which is uh, at the end of the, in the second page of the notes. Uh, move that the that select board approve of the schoolhouse building committee's proposal to add a 16 by 16 foot addition at the southerly end of the existing schoolhouse addition with a possibility of a 10 by 16 foot mezzanine and a shed roof addition at the westerly wall of the present and or new addition. Uh, it is understood that the building committee has the authority to decide on design and finishing details that will inevitably come up and to change the size of the addition and mezzanine depending on budget or design refinements. It is understood that the town will have access to the schoolhouse for meetings as needed and that visitors at schoolhouse functions will have access to the town office building restroom. This approval is contingent upon the receipt of all necessary permits. That's what we suggest to you. Of course, it's a suggestion because it's your motion, but I thought it might help to provide some wording. Um, I should uh, add one more thing, that in our opinion, if you look at the colored pictures, we think that the addition complements the existing structure. We think that it's architecturally <coughs> harmonious, uh, that it doesn't harm the existing one. Windows, of course, are subject to, you know, uh, different shape, possibly different, possibly different placement. Not in the original building, but in the addition. And you can look at it, you can tell, I hope, uh, what perspective you're looking at here. Uh, this is looking at the doorway, the entrance over here. And this is from the back of the new addition. There might be a door there. Um, <coughs> And this is sort of looking at it from the street, as it were, the lower, lower left. And this is looking at it, you're back to the town garage, looking at it from the west. And it shows the length, the whole length of the new structure. And the footprint is uh, fairly self-explanatory, I think. It does show the shed roof addition down at the bottom. And it, it's here as 24 feet. Um, we've sort of gone back and forth on that. At the last meeting, it was actually 16. David came through with 24, so I left it. It might, it might be smaller. Uh, it's one of those things that would have to be decided as we go along. So, we'd be glad to answer any questions. And I don't know whether my colleagues want to add. Would, would you just touch upon? The septic tank, that was an area of concern before in sure. terms of when we, where we build. So would you share what information you have about that? Yeah, it, it, it would appear from studying the plans, and Alan McBain is our engineer, or our septic designer and uh, consultant, and he looked at it, and it would appear that this isn't going to interfere at all with the uh, septic system. If we add the shed roof addition, we'll have to be extra sure because that would jut out. Whereas without that, it's just straight back. Mm -hmm. You really can't interfere. Um, if necessary, we'll hire someone to run a, 
I don't know what you call it, but a snake of some kind into the system to get all the way to the other end mm -hmm. to make sure that it uh, stops where we think it does. And that's something that Alan will advise us on. And he's going to get a state engineer to come down probably fairly soon to look at the site and double check, make sure everything is okay. Does that cover is, yes. as far as that yes. goes? Yeah. Jordan. If you wanted to carry it a little further, Alan did some research and are adding people to the septic system and more right. more people would not affect it because I forgot what the language was, but you must remember it. Yeah, Alan, uh, I think he his calculation showed that you could have a meeting of 70 people over there, which is more than you would ever have, plus all the meetings that you folks have here, all in one day without exceeding the capacity of the septic system. I believe that's, that's right. what he said, yeah. yeah. Do you, do you have a budget, Chuck, that you're trying to work with in already? Or? Well, we have about 70, a little over $70,000 in the kitty, right? In, um, well, we got the uh, bunker fund money, and then we well, had some money in the money market, which is separate from our checking. Yeah. So it would be close to 70. I think uh -huh. we, don't want to, we don't want to send, use it, all of it if we don't have to. Yeah. We so, won't know until we get a bid from people. Right. What we're going to do, if we receive your approval, is uh, David will draw um, you know, de the kind of detailed plans that a contractor would need, and then we're going to invite all Dummerston contractors to come and give us estimates. And the, the suggestion is that we don't ask for formal bids, because that uh, binds the contractor and sometimes runs up the the price of the job, so yeah. <laughs> we thought maybe estimates would be the way to go, and yeah. of course, absolutely, we're, we're going to, you know, choose somebody who makes sense to us and also has a good local reputation. Mm -hmm. um, so, roughly seventy thousand dollars estimates. Uh, somebody thought that two hundred dollars per square foot, mm -hmm. and someone not else thought that without any plumbing and so on, it might, be less, it might be less than that, perhaps. So I think we're probably in the game. We're not going to go to the society for local funding. We're going to stay within our budget. We think we can get small grants for finishing and furniture and that sort of thing. As far as we know, there doesn't seem to be any opportunity for major grants for this kind of um, addition. As far as we know at this point, anyway. The intention is to stay within the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, is the shed, is that going to open into the current edition and the new edition? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it would just be more floor space. And of course, at the lowest end of it, it might not be full headroom, but there would be quite a lot. And even if it isn't full headroom, it would be good storage. Mm -hmm. so. And the new edition, is that going to be on a slab or a my, well, good question. My guess is probably not a slab, probably, uh, you know, foundation walls and a cross space is what I imagine, but I don't know at this point. What would you suggest? I would suggest you consult with the experts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that's exactly, that's a good suggestion. I think we'll, we'll take you up on okay. that. Steve, of course, has had some experience. Yeah, I think you're going to want to look at frost walls, right? I think you're frost good. walls, yeah. yeah. Uh, can you say a little bit more about the funding sources for the budget, perhaps for our viewing audience? Yes, well, we were, um, Sam Bunker, local man, as you probably know, donated uh, some of his father's memorabilia. His father uh, was a distinguished ambassador, one of the most distinguished in the 20th century. And we received this material and imagined that maybe a university would like some of it and that maybe it would make a good yard sale. Until Jonathan Flaccus, our knowledgeable man when it comes to uh, rare material of that sort, suggested that we might want to think of sending some of it to auction, which we did. And it netted us 60. Well, we got 63, but there were some expenses, so we ended up with 60 plus. About a little over $60,000 in our in our budget, which was beyond our usual income. <laughs> <laughs> well beyond. 
we, we yeah. did keep mm -hmm. um, we kept, yeah. uh, quite a bit of artifacts and memorabilia that are relevant to Demerston. Mm -hmm. But with his travels to other countries, photographs with dignitaries, medals, pens, plaques, um, those are in demand by antique dealers, people who are collectors. Mm -hmm. And we felt we did not need to keep those. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So that's where the money okay. most of it came from. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Does anybody have any concerns? Can I make one more <laughs> comment? Um, sure. uh, this had to do with the idea of the trade off with the town, and I I think we've had two experiences which kind of show that maybe this building needs a little bit more meeting space for the bigger meetings. Um, and being on the planning commission, I know some of those get pretty big. Um, so it might be nice, you know, to, to be able to go over there and have even more room than we have now. We had a wonderful meeting last week. We had 62 people in there, and I probably shouldn't say that because I, don't, I think that's beyond our capacity. <laughs> But um, we need more space, too, even for, you know, some of these, we only meet quarterly, but some of them are really well attended. So it's just, it's showing up in, in real time that um, this is probably a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. When would you like to break ground on this? <laughs> Guess what? We have to go to the DRB. <laughs> is that Charlotte back there? <laughs> no, 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 that's Lynn. Oh, that's Lynn. <laughs> As so this is prudently possible. I don't know yeah. where that will be. The, the, the reason that uh, Cindy says, and I said that we'll have more meeting space over there, you may re remember that there is a, a hutch, a big display yes. case, oh, yeah. at the beginning of the current edition, mm -hmm. and we'll push that back some. I don't know how far, but enough to add you know, a significant number of additional chairs. Mm -hmm. so. okay. All right. Any other questions? Comments? Well, I just wondered if anybody had any concerns here. Lewis is being kind of quiet. Lewis, Lewis is often, he's a thoughtful member of I the I realize program. that. <laughs> Who's the chatterbox? Um, you? Uh, Joe. 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 But he's yeah. not here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. If there are no other questions. Well, the only other question I had, as a committee, who is going to be charged with making all the design decisions and refinements and so on. That's a pretty large group to talk about doorknobs and, and uh, um, different appointments for the room. So I'm wondering if you as a committee have had any experience you know, with design decisions. <laughs> I know. Certainly wow. wrong. <laughs> Go. Built a screen porch. But I suppose the person who's had the most relevant experience is Ruth. <laughs> and I'm the newest member of the committee, so I'm not really up to speed on, on this project. But um, Tell us what you did in Putnam. Well, the, the most recent thing that I've done is um, I'm the president of the Putney Historical Society, and so we're working on the old church building in Putney where the next stage performing arts group is and we're we're doing a lot of work on that. We rebuilt the Putney General Store after we had rehabbed it partially and it burned again. And I was on the building committee for the Brattleboro Union High School renovation and uh, we we think that if you think of the church the general store and the Brattleboro High School, uh, compared to the scale of our <laughs> 16 by 16, <laughs> yeah. that, that perhaps we have someone with vision experience to help with guide us with doorknobs. And with yeah. doorknobs, yeah. right? But it's a, it's a relevant question because mm -hmm. a committee can have trouble, uh, you know, among itself. But we're very harmon we're a very yeah, harmonious group. Because and we always come after some, you know, polite discussion. We always come to a decision that we're all happy with. So you can all agree on the color of the doors. Oh, absolutely. That, that's no problem whatsoever. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thanks, Oscar. Yes. Yeah. All right. So 
What would you like to do with this? Well, I'd, I'd like to move that we allow them to proceed. I'm just not sure I need to read this entire paragraph. But, uh, <laughs> um, I, I would move that we allow the Historical Society to uh, proceed with the building okay. addition. You want to say you want to have what he has here? Just put, just have her put that in as your motion. You don't have to read it all. It's already been read once. Has Chuck read previously? Yeah, yeah. Why don't we do it that way? I'll, I'll move that this is the motion that I'll submit. <laughs> <laughs> good I'll idea, Lewis. Okay. That's probably a good idea. It, it's a little more um, protective of, of our mm. wishes and an open motion. Okay. We've got a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate your support and we'll do a good job for the society and the town. Thank you very Have much. Have a great job for you well. Thanks. So, uh, well, let's move right along. The Conservation Commission, do we have, would you like to come up? Uh, Jody's on this Can we go along with our meeting now, Jody? Or? <laughs> What? Did she give me a scat? Yeah, I just identified scat. I just never know what you're going to do. All right. Uh, thanks for coming in. You're going to give us some information about your uh, ash survey. Yeah. So we're going to have this joint discussion. First of all, we're not talking about the way back history. We're talking about only since 2012 is that kind of ash for a problem. So we're here from the Conservation Commission, and both of us have been working on um, problems with um, invasives, and so this is focused on the web ash borer. We're not here to ask you for anything. We're just to let you know what we've been working sure. on. All right. So we've seen your, the map that you prepared. Oh, good. I didn't know if we needed more copies. Um, I would like to copy. Yeah. 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 I made them. Thank you. Um. Okay. Great. So going back, this is Emerald Ash Borer Awareness Week. It's been in the paper quite a bit mm -hmm. in terms of trying to get the word out, and that's been our mission is to try to get the word out about a problem that might be a problem here. And this is the best example. So do uh, questions about emerald ash borer itself before I move on? I know mean, you probably don't, but other okay. people might Do you remember the purple boxes that the yeah. state was monitoring with? And right. So it's a, it's, I don't know, how, it's a green, I have a sheet it's here. It's an emerald it's colored beetle. It is, it's <laughs> true, and here's, here's pictures of it. Here. From our wonderful Vermont Invasives website. Thank you. So, um, yes, it's beautiful. It's beautiful right. but it's absolutely devastating for the ash. And uh, wherever it's been, it, it just wipes out all the ash. There's no been any, it came here in 2012, they think, on some solid wood from Asia. We're not really clear about that, but that's the best understanding of what happened. And that came into Michigan. Wasn't it, wasn't it earlier than 2012? You no, know, that's what everything yeah. says. Oh. Yeah, I know, it feels like it's 2014. Yeah, I know, too. it's been a lot. This, that's, yeah. Uh, okay. Am I getting that right? 2012 or is it 2002? Yeah, we've been talking, talking about it longer right. right. than that. Right. But so maybe right. it's 2002 and I just got it completely sure, sure. wrong. No, I, it's 2000 business, yes. I have trouble with Oh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. It's been here for a while. It's been here yeah, for a while. It's been here for a while, I thought so. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay. It didn't sound right um, to me either. So. 
you know, the, the issue is that it's really hard to detect Emerald Ash, the, the issue from it, because it's here and you see it three years later when you discover it's actually here because it's very subtle signs and if you look mm -hmm. at your handout you can see canopy dieback. Mm -hmm. You know, we have lots of diseases on ash mm -hmm. called ash dieback because we and microplasma that affects that. So the fact that you have an ash tree that is looking like this is uh, you know, it can be caused by many, many issues. But there's some other good pictures of epicormic shoots that it doesn't look like anything else but an ash. I've never seen anything else look like that in the woods. Um, and, you know, the main key here is the, the D shape that it comes out. So the reason we're bringing it to you is because as leaders in our town, just to be familiar with something that might be a real problem. Mm -hmm. and which is which brings us to what we show this map. This inventory. Oh, where it shows in that oh yeah, this is the best map. Okay, where the emerald asteroid is discovered, and you'll you'll quickly see as it goes around that Vermont is gray, and everything around has splatters of mm -hmm. red, showing that emerald asteroid is all around us, mm -hmm. and it probably is here. We just haven't it hasn't been detected. detected. So, and in fact, Bessie is going to become a first detective looking at that ongoing monitoring of that. So, um, and, and so we went, the, our, our mission when we got this grant from the state to come up with a preparatory plan of what to do was we went on the main roads and we inventoried all the ash because we're not thinking about the ash in the woods. We're not trying to go out and cut ash trees before you get the disease. That is not the plan. The issue is the safety of along the roads and what would the town be responsible for if there was an ash um, or an infestation. So that's the mission. It was not to look at the acreage in town, but just to specify the acreage, on, I mean, the, the trees lining so the we, road. So we drove very slowly and GPS the roads that you see on the map so that we could get an idea of where there were concentrations of ash trees that were um, close to the road, fairly good size. We sort of ignored trees that were um, far from the road or down an embankment and obviously if they died they weren't going to be falling on the road. Um, so um, we didn't map every road in town, but we wanted to get a good idea of where the, the you know, primary um, stands of ash were. And, yeah, and I was, Stickney Brook Road is laden with ash trees, which doesn't make any sense to me, but, um, <clears throat> because it's high up in the hill, but an ash tend to grow in, in valleys and where it's very nutrient rich. Um, so that was really fascinating. So we have, the conclusion is we have 540 ash trees along the roads that, that we monitor. Right. Yeah. And you have a copy of the um, report, I think, that shows the roads that we drove. So we covered right. about we covered about half the roads in town and more than that. More than that. Yeah. And the and, uh, and the roads that we thought were most heavily traveled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so 540 trees, what would that mean for the town? If we had, and we're asking you to think about that question, what would that be? We're talking, if it, if it was, if it took an average, an hour to take down these big trees in town, we would be talking about 400 hours and 500 hours and 10 weeks of work for somebody, it would be enormous. So our suggestion is not to do anything right now but just to think about where would that wood go if they had to be if it had to be cut down? Where would we store that wood? You can move wood within the in the area that's infested, but you can't move them out. Once it once it's identified in an area, the state will set some quarantine rules around that area that the wood can't be moved. That's one of the primary ways that it's been moved around through the U.S. is by people moving fire away. Yeah. 
So, um, but as yet, it hasn't been it hasn't been discovered here. It's fairly, in in my definition of slow, is a fairly slow process, and it's three to five years once a tree has been infected, and it may have been slowed by the cold winter. So, there's other options. You know, we're certainly not recommending that the town start thinking about cutting down trees. Um, but we'll let you know when it gets. But we think that it, we think it's an, an a big problem that needs to be given right. some That's right. some thought. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not sure what any of the answers are. We don't really have the answers. Well, just when you're talking thinking. about other options, what are you thinking of? Well, there are really very few because there's chemicals, but it's expensive yeah. and it needs to be redone. So, um, detecting it quickly and trying to keep any wood being moved from the area right now seems to be the only solution. Mm -hmm. right. Preemptive cutting doesn't make any sense. You can't start cutting down 500 ash trees. That's insane. So the, the, only, the only thing that we can recommend right now is that we have people in town that are aware of it, that are watching for it. The trouble is, as Lynn said, it's difficult to detect. And often by the time it's detected, the tree has already been essentially girdled by the larvae. They dig around the inside under the bark. Um, so the tree is already uh, dead and dying. But, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get some people that are aware of it and are watching for it. So the state does the monitoring, those purple boxes? That's only one part of it. Basically, mm -hmm. there's this whole monitoring system going on of volunteers throughout the state. Yeah, that's, what, what, I'm, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. The purple boxes were a study that they were doing right. for a while, and I don't even know if they're going to do that this year. I'm not even sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure. But it, that was, again, just a, you know, just to get a handle upon it. One of the... One, one thing you can look out for, all of a sudden, there's a lot of woodpeckers mm -hmm. on a tree, an ash tree. And that's a sign that they're being fed very well, and that's why they're coming back and back to the tree. So that's just something to look for. So we don't, you know, it's not like we have any more just to report to you, just that we have the, all these trees, and you should know. The other, um, the other, aside from the quarantine and chemical, the other thing that may pan out is some kind right. of biological control. Right. So there's a there have been there's been some work done with a wasp that right. Right. will deal with the problem. Um, so the woodpeckers eating it is a hopeful sign. So there's there may be in a few years we may be able to come up with a biological right. control. Which is why the all idea is I mean people that are my landowners are saying, should I be cutting all the ash trees? And it's like the wrong thing to do because there could be some genetic diversity in the ash, and if we go in and cut all of it, then we're just we're just going to do in the ash. I mean, it's just no because there may be that. some that are developing resistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the hope that there's always within, like the beach. You know, the beach has one percent is it doesn't have beach scale. Do you remember what the um, rough percentages for the number of trees that are ash trees in Vermont? I have it somewhere. No. Yeah. So there's a lot of them. Yeah, there's but it's a small percentage. It's yeah. Percentage-wise, it's not. It's not. It's not, it's not a major big. tree. No, because it's like here and there and there. And it doesn't grow in great clusters. And it also is for green ash too, which is like the Norman Doe have the the wetland on um, on on your left. Okay. <laughs> um, that are that affected too. So it's not just the. There wetland. are some towns in Vermont that are um, thinking about. Um, cutting because they have planted ash um, at, on their roads that go directly into their town. They've planted them on purpose. So they're taking, you know, starting to take some down. So there are towns that are doing that. Right. Um, but it's, that's, uh, you know, expensive. So, yeah. so question that you have. So have you given, have, we, have you gotten a copy yeah. of this yet? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And our, um, that was our main. Tree warden? Um, Not for you now? Well, no. No, okay. Nor did I know who the tree warden was. Uh, this is the first appointment we make every year. Every year. Oh my <laughs> god, all I knew is Charlie has been the tree warden for a hundred years. Right, yeah. right. Okay. Yes, Godfrey Renault has taken over. Okay, that's right. good. Yeah. So we should definitely, I mean, not that Godfrey doesn't know everything, but he hasn't seen this map. Sure. To know the, right. uh, the, um, the, the extent of it. Mm -hmm. 
Right, that. right. I, I never would have imagined, you know, I that know. much ash. Along the roads. Right, right. I was... Yeah. I just, I was wondering about the chances of them actually stopping it. If it's, if it, if they are, um, I don't want to say doomed, but pretty much um, it's coming. Right. Um, I mean, there are, uh, I almost think that it's maybe not a, um, uh, maybe not cut them all, but um, anything that's maybe leaning towards the road instead of away from the road. Um, so then in 10 years, if, if it's here, right. we aren't that much further ahead. Um, and the landowners, you know, they take, um, you know, probably 30% of the wood anyways, uh -huh. um, landowners uh -huh. along the road. I think that's a very wise move, yeah. just to, for those the trees that are clearly, but I would think that's a small percentage that we saw that are really, yeah, uh, we, didn't, we didn't see a lot of trees that looked like they were, yeah, they're mostly all straight, <laughs> they, they're, they're they're like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and um, so, so, but yeah. yeah, I think looking out for that, and I just, it's education at this point, I would say, but yeah, yeah if there was certainly, I, we saw the power company, I don't get it, we saw the power company and took some ash trees and they, they cut it, it was, was it over feet? five millers? Yeah, mm -hmm. 16 feet in the air and then they just cut yeah. the top off. Yeah. It's the funniest looking thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, do you have any questions? I was going to come along and carve a bear out of the rest of it, I suppose. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Snowshoes, more snowshoes. Any other questions? No? No. Okay, well, great. thank you very much yep. for this yep. information, yep. and I hope you enjoyed the rest of uh, Ash Awareness Week. Yes, <laughs> Galabar's yeah, having lots of fun. It's our new, uh, it's our new entertainment. Yes. to drive around. Look for yes. ash trees. Yes. <laughs> we see them everywhere now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, thanks. So thanks very much for coming. Here, I'll leave you with this because okay. I just thought uh, where we are. And Great. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, look at this. I see it in my locust tree. What does that mean? Yeah. Uh, so that's very strange. We have uh, recognition of uh, visitors and public comments. Oh, this is so hard. Yeah. Ruth, have any? This is a part of the show where oh, I, public I, comments. I'm, I'm just here to... Oversee. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We've been Good luck. Sorely, sorely lacking <laughs> overseeing. <laughs> oversee. So, all right. Um, let's move on to the highway report. And here's our road foreman. We change one. Step right up. He's much more than I am. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> um. So we can start off with the uh, truck and equipment sure. bids. Yep. Um, looking them over, um, Summit was the least expensive. Uh, so um, with the trade and the warranty, Summit was uh, 22360 and HP Fairfield with the body, sander, plow, and I did forget two hydraulic lines for the um, rake, and that's what that extra three hundred dollars is for. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, thirty thousand one hundred ninety. So the total should be uh, fifty-two thousand five hundred and fifty, uh, and we had budgeted uh, sixty thousand for it. So. I think everything was good on that. So I'll make a motion that we uh, award the uh, truck bid to Summit and the equipment bid to HP Fairfield. Oh, I'll second it. <laughs> so we can discuss it. <laughs> okay. Do you have a second? Uh, any discussion? I, I just wanted Lee. Uh, uh, um, can we go back to why, uh, just refresh me why we went to gas instead of looking at diesel, because it looks like 
diesel might have come under 60. Yeah, I think it probably would have or it would have been right at 60. Right, yeah. Um, if we had done it. I um, the reason um, is maintenance costs. Um, and anyone you talked with for the mileage that we put on there in the eight years is saying, you know, why not? Um, and I just thought we could save some money and it would do everything we need to do. Is getting gas going to be a little bit of a pain for you? I don't believe so. Okay. It, I mean, it's definitely not going to be as handy as, yeah. um, but we are planning on getting two cards, one for the, um, Irvin and one for Snelco and, uh, keeping an envelope and the card in the truck and, and, uh, handing in the gas receipts, um, every two weeks or, um, But you're comfortable with going with the gas instead yeah, of Yeah, so. I am. Um, I think there's just a lot of idling time too, pulling the rake. Right, yeah. And, I, and those, the gas motors, uh, yeah. The I mean, diesel don't like the idling. Right, like and definitely the, the Fords, um, we are having our issues with them and I think the maintenance costs are, are pretty high. Not that you can't get any um, truck that, uh, that will have problems, but I, I think it's it's time to try one. Um, how, how do you feel about the um, service and warranty out of Summit? Have you looked into? I that? haven't heard anything um, negative um, or um, and and definitely with the service and warranty. If it's uh, if there is problems, then. Um, I've heard all right things about Keen, um, and it's pretty much how we do the internationals too. We just buy it from the dealer that has the uh, the best deal, and and we we pretty much always go to uh, Reeds to get them uh, serviced. Um, I do like it if if they work out great. It's nice having somebody right down the right, road yeah. that you can just pull it into if you have a problem. Um, yeah, it seems it seems kind of strange, you know. We went from gas when I first started on the one tons. <laughs> now we're going back to a gas, but but fuel injection, um, you know, we don't deal with plugs or anything like that. Um, we'll never have to touch them. Um, so I think if we can save eight thousand dollars, then I think it's worth a, worth a try. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The curb cut on Rice Farm Road. Um, we just wanted to let ask Clark know that we're I, yeah, okay. yeah, I did talk to them already. Um, and I called the other dealers and, and gave them the prices and um, you know, what our initial, or my initial thought was, if everything was equal. Mm -hmm. um, so, everyone's informed. Okay, good, thanks. Yeah. Uh, okay. That was uh, Richard Epstein's, and that curb cut goes up to that greenhouse at um, Elizabeth Wood. Yeah, Elizabeth Wood. Wood. Um, mm -hmm. uses, there's already a little right, yeah. road up into Tough there. Area, yeah. yeah, I guess uh, Derek's are going to um, improve it some. Uh, there's just no room for a uh, culvert there. Um, so that's why I mentioned about the water bar. And there is a little water bar there now um, to keep the water from the field coming down the road. It's definitely not the perfect situation, um, but it's I think it's the best they're going to get there. Well, I'll make a motion that we um, sign the curb cut permit for Richard Epstein on Rice Farm Road. No, second that. Okay, any discussion? I, I just, what was, it, there just isn't room for culvert, you're saying, Lee? It's yeah, the bank comes right to the road. Okay. You know, and it, it jumps up. Um, As you're heading down the, the left hand bank or something? Uh, when you're heading down the hill, it'd be on the right. On the right. Cutting back up into the field. Oh, oh, um, oh it's good okay. visibility. Yeah. Um, okay. It, 
it's, it's more the water that we had a big concern about yeah, and what yeah. we, I really talked to them about it and uh, to make sure that if they did put a road, the water didn't run down the ruts and then right down into the road. Okay. Um, so I believe it's, I think he's going to do it right. Okay. Okay, any other discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. A couple things we're going to be working on. Um, well, the loader bucket on the, um, well, actually on the loader, it uh, needs to be, have a, um, we rebuilt the uh, skids, um, the wear plates on the bottom and sides, um, and it's going to need a new, um, uh, all I can think of is like a shell on the inside, a new piece of metal. Um, and we're going to have to, um, John Bremer is the person that we've used before on the backo bucket and stuff, and, and he'll be putting that in. Um, he still has to give me a price and uh, everything, but it really has to be done. So it's, it's, there's actually a hole in it now where it's more through, so. Um, but that's You'll probably try to find a used one or a second hand one. No, 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 no. we didn't. The rest of the bucket's in pretty oh, good shape. Oh, okay. It's right. actually in great shape. It's just okay. that bottom, I don't know what's up with it, but the bottom wore right out of it. Okay. Um, there's a water problem in the West Village where it's um, running across, coming out of some driveways, uh, across the road yeah. and down into Hughes. Um, I met with them the other day. I was going to try to get it this morning and there was cars parked there. Um, all we can really do is uh, regrade the shoulder on the other side to try to get the driveways so there's a little ditch along the side of the road. Um, the problem is, is that his driveway just naturally gets a lot of water anyways. Um, so we're going to try to do something with that uh, shoulder tomorrow and then um, he's, he's always going to get water down his driveway and he realizes that. But we're just trying to, those two inch rainstorms where it comes down blacktop driveways or driveways that get washed out into the road. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to try to take care of that. Um, it's not going to be perfect because on paved roads you just can't get the crown back in until they repave. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. That was the situation over there. Um, we've been uh, grading and graveling the roads. Um, so far we've put out about 3,000 yards of gravel um, this last month and um, we ended up using about 100 yards of inch and a half stone for the different wet areas. Um, I gotta say, Kipling Road is one of the worst, but uh, Beaver Pond Road also. Um, but nothing was terrible. So, and everything's drying out. Um, next week, we should be around once um, with the grader. Uh, we're working some over on the west side now, and then we have a few, Dutton Farm Road, a few odds and ends over here. Finish up. Yeah, um, I had a call on Hay Road. Is that yeah. pretty close to your list? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was we were going to do it Friday, and then, um, oh. and then with this rain, we ended right. up hauling gravel to the Sunset Lake. So we're going to do that first, and then get it next it is week. Route, yeah. 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 Um, the grant for the structure on Quarry Road, um, Lori and I are finishing that up. Um, I'm hoping to get it down there tomorrow. Uh, we did get the easements. Not both of them are, aren't signed, but I have assurances that um, they're going to be signed. So, so we're going to get that into the state. Um, also, uh, next week um, we're going to be uh, opening a carpenter pit and to start making our sand for next year also. We need to make probably around 3,500, 4,000 yards before July, hopefully. Do we have to have our uh, uh, town of Putney, Dummerston oh, field trip to do the carpenter yeah. pit again? Yeah. I, if we want to, we so can. Look for arrowheads? Yeah, exactly. Gold. <laughs> If we want to, um, there just isn't then as much activity with not doing yeah. gravel down there too. So, mm -hmm. um, 
It doesn't look much different, but okay. Um, definitely, if you would like to go see the gravel pits mm -hmm. or something, or people who haven't been, I, I don't mind meeting you here at the office and mm -hmm. taking you for a quick ride. Or, That'd be great. And uh, you can see what we're up to. Mm -hmm. um, Where are your hard boots? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> that means it's darn muddy out. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> that's that's Gee, better. <laughs> <not there. laughs> okay. Yes. Um, if anyone else had anything, that's all I had, really. Um, besides um, executive session, I was going to stay around for... Um, Okay. To talk about yep. uh, one thing. Uh, All right. Any other questions for Lee? No? Okay. Right. And before I forget, I was listening to uh, the radio and uh, uh, this very well known author on a Civil War historian was talking. Um, and uh, he made reference to Dummerston's Ruth Barton as being an expert in uh, the field. Of, uh, uh, and, and referred, you know, some caller to, uh, you know, huh. look up Ruth Barton as being an expert in, uh, the, Civil in the Civil War, War. era, Vermont. I was there. <laughs> wait, wait. Now we need those high boots. <laughs> Did they have zoning then, Ruth? <laughs> so. George Washington's first inaugural was in 1789 on this stage. I was there too. Thank you, Ruth, for sharing that. <laughs> I thought you'd be interested since we're talking about old history. Sure, sure. Who was this author? It must be uh, Howard. Howard Coffin. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Howard. Uh, let's see. Correspondence for information. Uh, updates from uh, um, BLCT, um, Deborah Titus, and I think the Planning Commission's. So sort of that's in their ballpark right now. Um, anything there you would want to discuss? Okay. Um, under uh, correspondence for discussion and or action we have from uh, the library trustees um, a question about the storage room at the community center. Uh, let me start by disclosing a potential conflict of interest. Yes. Because uh, the books that are currently being unable to store in the basement storage room are currently in my pole barn, and they, I've had them in there for years. So I do have a personal interest in where those books are stored, and as well as my wife does, because she's on the Friends of the Lydia uh, Committee. I don't think I'd make you have to worry about any of this. That's just my feeling. I mean, mm -hmm. You can good to just bring it up, but I don't think you have to sit out on it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my feeling also. Uh, I think as long as you're not financially receiving benefit from it, I don't think we need to worry about it. No, no <laughs> and I'm sure there isn't with the libraries, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. But thank you for letting us know that. Sure. Well, it seems that they have a storage spot. I guess we don't have to do it. Let's move on. <laughs> it's not ideal. <laughs> well, I remember when we went over there, we were, we were talking about uh, shelters and looking at the storage room down there, and I remember it being pretty humid. And but they have water actually run in there. Remember right. when we looked on the right. back side? Right, because the drainage wasn't right around there. The drainage wasn't right. By the windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Not a great place to store books. No, I think it's unfit for its intended purpose. <laughs> and so I don't think there's a lot we can do about it. I mean, I just... I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we could 
look into, I thought we were going to look into doing something about the drainage on the backside to see, because I think it's going right through the windows right, as, we, yeah. as we saw, and we thought possibly dropping and putting some drainage. I don't remember that we were going to do that, though. I was yeah. thinking somebody that was there with us was going to talk, look into that. Lester, maybe? I can't remember specifically who was with us that evening. Hmm. No, my, my memory is a little foggy on that too. It wasn't Tom Bodet was going to bring his tractor down. Mm -hmm. No. Hmm. Uh, but when we talked earlier in the oh, day, yes. you were. I, I will say that I've been to the basement, and there is a much drier area that's adjacent to the boiler um, room. Uh, there's a large storage area in there that's that's occupied with various things of the community center, and. Um, one possible change would be to demarcate a similar square area um, in that drier uh, room and uh, allocate that much spare square feet to the uh, library. But that would be a question for the community center and the library to negotiate. Mm -hmm. With Lewis's help. And suggest a dehumidifier. Is there space enough there for all the books in your whole barn? <laughs> uh, the the amount the volume of books varies each year, so oh. I don't know if it would be <laughs> totally sufficient, uh, but it would certainly, you know, if you stack floor to ceiling with boxes of books in the square area of that storage room, you could fit a lot of books and maybe all of them. <laughs> Hmm, okay. So, sometimes in the past when we've had a community center library issue, um, Lewis has helped out. Or yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't have a problem contacting okay. people from the uh, community center and library to yeah. see about okay. talking to them. Okay. You need any help? Not at this time. Okay. But if I do, I'll yell. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, that would be great. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, oh, uh, Lydia Taft, another um, David Paquin, Patrick. Am I saying that right? Patrick Quinn. Thank you. You're um, called. And they're having um, a uh, celebration on May 17th, Saturday. I think he said at about 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I think there's going to be a marching band from the elementary school, uh, dignitaries. Uh, it's the 100th the anniversary. 100th anniversary. It's and they're not just doing they that. were hoping someone from the select board would come and offer a few words of inspiration and uh, wisdom. I, I, Zeke, that would be a good spot. I'm glad. Yeah, he called <laughs> I thought that was done. He called yeah. Zeke directly. I mean, he, he talked to the man he wanted with the wisdom. I thought yeah. maybe while we were over there. <laughs> well, I, I don't think I'd be over that day. <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah, he just walked. Well, it doesn't even, you know, just throw a bathrobe on it. <laughs> over, I mean. Stay right from his window, pretty much. Yeah, shut up, shut up. Well, then, um, I think my tuxedo was in the cleaners. But, uh, I could do that, and if something happens, maybe you could be the backup. Backup? Yeah. Back up. Great, great. You know, I don't know, sometimes the rope foreman, it's sometimes... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, really I think that would be a real good... I think yeah. that would be great. Cool. I think he should be right there beside you and... <laughs> so so you're right and the waiter, maybe the waiter of... What if we ask the waiter of Cole to do lately? You know, the waiter of Cole, I think she's slacking on those duties. Maybe she ought to be picking up some other duties. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we'll have to carpool over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Be surprised um, if I showed up for the big speech now, wouldn't you? I would be. <laughs> so, uh, but I uh, can't because caring and sharing is that day. <laughs> oh, I knew I was going to be doing something. Like that. Um, <laughs> so we have uh, we kicked this down the road quite a bit. The setting a date for the goals uh, work session. We could. Anything at down the road, um, or we could just bite the bullet and set a date. Why don't we just set a date? Let's and, do that. But be an hour rather than having a whole other meeting. Can we just get here an hour ahead of a regular meeting, or is that not a good idea? That would work for me. What about like the twenty-first of May or something? That's not a regular meeting. The fourteenth is thirteen. Four. Oh yeah, twenty-eighth of May. Yeah. Melissa, does that make sense? Or? Yeah, I, I don't have my calendar on me, but yeah, we could do that. Just say it's having a whole nother meeting. 28th, night. Joe would be back by then. Good, mm -hmm. good for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So I'll move that we have our goals meeting May 28th at 5 o'clock. All right. Do we need a second? We'll just. <coughs> we do? Mm -hmm. I said no, we just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll just set it. That's what we'll do. Oh, okay. We'll just do it. Okay, so May 28th at 5 o'clock. I'm sure it would have been unanimous had we taken a vote. <laughs> um, so, on the new business, um, well, we have a candidate for the Recreation Board. What would you like to do? I'll um, move. Uh, we appoint Ellen Liam to the Recreation Board. Second. Okay, any discussion? Do we have, I mean, this goes right back to the other one. Um, appreciate all the time, you know, her willingness to do this, and I mean, she's a great person to do it, but do we even put it out there for anybody? I know the rec board has put it out saying they're look, they were looking for somebody. Have we put it out there saying that we were looking for somebody? We have. Um been an ongoing one? Is that what we're going on? Yeah, with? I mean, it's not posted on the website any longer because it was there for so long. Hmm. Okay. Well, that was my only thing, but. Do we? Okay. Any other discussion? All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. trustee. And um, so it was brought up that the library trustees interviewed a couple of people. They forwarded uh, the name of someone uh, they um, thought highly of uh, for us for approval and question is um, where it's says I guess under the rules where um, no one was elected to fill that uh, I guess it goes to the select board to make the appointment and if that's the case then maybe the select board should also at least talk to this other candidate we should actually ask people if they're interested put something out there to see if anybody else is interested yeah just this caught me, you know, it was sort of on the, my radar, but... Um, um, historically, I think the way they handled it is the way that it's been handled in the past. Uh -huh. I know that when I was appointed, I didn't interview with the select board. I just, the library trustees said, please appoint. Uh-huh. Right, I think that's the way it was done. And, uh, a lot of things. Yeah, it was, and it was people like do that onto board. Put on board. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not saying. Well, I'm just. Right, I think boards. Um, my understanding is boards used to just forward right. names and a sort of a rubber stamp, and that uh, that uh, recent boards have tried to get away from that and actually. Um, interview whoever's interested and make an uh, appointment from there. So, what would you like to do with this one? I would like to have it posted at least on the website 
and let people know, and I'd like to find out who the other person was. And, and, I don't, I, and I'd like to interview that person, you know, tell that person to come for an interview with the select board. Because I don't want them to think that they don't have a shot, you know, have a chance to be. If they, if they were willing to take their time to be, uh, you know, a library trustee, they, they should be able to come and talk to us. It's a former trustee. Is yeah. who they, um, it was Judy and Ella. Yeah, and I think... You know, I'd like to. I'd like to have. You know, and, and there we go. I mean, now we've got to, because um, Susan seemed like a great candidate. I mean, really does. And so now we, it sounds like we're going to have two. You know, now we have another one. So I, I'd like to, you know, at least speak to that person, and I'd like to see it on the website for until our next meeting. I think Lewis makes a good point. We need to stay consistent how we make our appointments. And I, I, Sounds reasonable to me. Yes, I think it sounds reasonable also. Mm -hmm. So, this, it's Judy and Ella. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, would you like to invite her to? Sure. Ask me, but we should, and can you also post that this is open? And I, and I guess when I meet with the, the library, library uh, if nobody has an issue with it, I'll mention to them, I think, the yeah. protocol that we should be taking. That, you know, but if we find out that, I, I just can't see where, if we should be the one to appoint. I can't see where the library is, but maybe they are. No, no, you, the select board makes the appointment, but be, prior to this, the right. library okay, trustees but, just recommended Right, so I, 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 I would like to, you know, yeah. And I think all boards should realize that too, even the rec board, because I know the rec board was going around asking people to, you know, they, they needed somebody that needed to eat somebody. And I don't know whether they were asking them to come to them. I mean, the letter almost sounded like it was to come to them that I saw, but it's, they, they come to the select board. Yeah, it's important to stay consistent. So right. your point is a good point. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I might just make a comment. All right. I think in years past, it's been that these groups really had to beat the bushes to find a person, a person who was willing to serve. And so there, there was no choice. You know, if they were lucky enough to find a person without holding a gun to somebody's head. They found her. <laughs> um, then, then that was the person who got appointed. You're very fortunate in these, this day and age that you do have more interest in town, more people willing to um, run for these positions or be willing to be appointed to these positions. I didn't see the great line of people wanting to be weigher of coal, but... Well, actually, we oh, did. Actually, we did have yeah. We do have yeah. a waiting list. We, there yeah. is a waiting list. Uh, there's yeah. a waiting list? Yeah. 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 They're, oh, they're all waiting for me to die. Yes, they are. <laughs> no, just... Yeah, well, to retire. Oh, 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 No, the word, the word I heard was they're just waiting for you to seek higher office. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, all right, so that's the plan then. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, we have the... Oh, but one more. Does some, do one of you want to contact Susan and just explain to her why she sure. is? Sure, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Using current. All right. And moving on. Uh, the lease for the community center. Is, um, expires June 30th of this year. Um, the same as last year, I guess, but... How will we sign the lease for the uh, community center? I second that. Okay, any discussion? All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Another dollar we get. Another dollar, right? We already paid that too. Just have you gotten a dollar yet? Yes. Oh, good. 
I was thinking maybe we'd get some interesting penalties. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're signing a little early. Um, so, any other business to come before this board? So I move that we go into executive session for a personnel matter. No second time. Personnel, right, Lee? Sure. Yep. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.